This is Michael Wilson. We're looking at the question, what does the Bible say about hypocrisy? <sighs> this, is, this is a tough one. In, in essence, hypocrisy refers to the act of claiming to believe something, but acting in a different manner. Now, I'm just going to start out and confess, I do this. It's not pretty, but I know I do it. So the word itself is derived from a Greek term for actor, literally one who wears a mask. In other words, someone who pretends to be what he is not. Now, the Bible calls hypocrisy a sin, but the one thing we probably ought to all catch up to is how much Jesus hated it. I mean, hated it. Jesus quoted this verse, aiming at the same condemnation of the religious leaders as the Old Testament in his day. And John the Baptist refused to give hypocrites a pass, telling them to produce fruits worthy of repentance. Jesus took an equally staunch stand against sanctimony. <laughs> God help us. Jesus called hypocrites wolves in sheep's clothing, whitewashed tombs, snakes, and a brood of vipers. You think Jesus hates hypocrisy? Does he really? Yes, with a passion. He hates it. So we cannot say we love God if we do not love our brothers. And how many times a day do I not? Too many. So we learn that love must be without hypocrisy. A hypocrite may look righteous on the outside, but it's facade. True righteousness comes from inner transformation of the Holy Spirit not external conformity to a set of rules. And we love rulemaking no matter how much we say we don't. We're constantly judging others by a set of rules that we do not live up to ourselves. And I know that in my life, it must stop. Jesus also addressed the other form of hypocrisy in the Sermon on the Mount. I like to call it the Jesus Manifesto. And of course, he said, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank, the log, the beam that is in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, oh, let me take that speck out of your eye, when all the time there's a log in your own eye? You hypocrite. He's direct. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So during Jesus' earthly ministry, he had many run-ins with religious people, religious followers, religious leaders of his day, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees. These men were well-versed in the scripture and zealous about following every letter of the law every letter of the law, and they were critical of anyone who did not. So in adhering to the letter of the law, they, they saw loopholes that allowed them to violate the spirit of the law, and they displayed such a lack of compassion towards their fellow men, and they were overly demonstrative of their so-called spirituality in order to gain praise. Do we like to be called on first to lead the prayer? Do we desire to lead the Bible teaching when, in fact, we've been looking at pornography all week? Do we like to talk about how bad it is to lust when we lust ourselves every day? Jesus denounced their behavior in no uncertain terms, pointing out that justice and mercy and faithfulness are more important than pursuing perfection based on faulty standards. So Jesus made it clear the problem was not the law, but the way in which the religious people of the day were implementing it. Today, the word Pharisee has actually become synonymous with hypocrite, but we don't take it seriously in our own lives. I know I don't, and I stand guilty 
and I must repent. I must change my mind. I must act differently. I must confront my own depravity. So as children of God, we are called to strive for holiness. We are to hate what is evil and cling to what is good. We should never imply an acceptance of sin, especially in our own lives, we should always strive to be consistent with what we believe and what we are in the Messiah Jesus. Play acting is meant for the stage, but not for real life.